Singapore is calling for ASEAN and China to adopt a long-term view when it comes to regional partnerships. The education minister says uh, building an open and inclusive economic infrastructure is how both sides can seize opportunities growth opportunities. And Mr Chan Chun Singh was speaking at the closing of the Future China Global Forum. Countries, including countries in ASEAN, will want to learn from different partners and have a diverse portfolio of partnerships for greater resilience. The region and China will need to work together to broaden and deepen the network of trade agreements to connect their supply chains and their value chains so that both sides can be more competitive globally because the competition is not local or regional but global. Mr Chan adds that it's not just about agreements but working on how to make it easier for trade to happen behind borders. We need to be able to work with one another easily, efficiently and effectively. Not just in terms of hardware, but more importantly, in our rules and regulations, as, the, as well as the use of software and data flows. Going forward, common standards in intellectual property protection, legal standards, financial standards will all become even more important Digitalization and sustainability are two new areas of growth which Singapore says ASEAN and China can leverage to strengthen their partnerships. Also at the Future China Global Forum, Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Keat has urged ASEAN to stay united and open. But he says how it manages its relationships with major partners will be vital. Michelle Teo reports. Here in Shenzhen, Singapore companies are piloting paperless cross-border trade more than 2,600 kilometres away from home. Such digital collaboration is one area Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kit has identified as a new building block to strengthen cooperation between ASEAN and China. Another is in sustainable development, where Southeast Asia can help bridge the infrastructure funding gap for projects like the Belt and Road Initiative. But claims over the South China Sea between China and ASEAN members could undermine such progress and hence the need to manage friction and disputes constructively. Relations between neighbours are often more complicated than relations between distant countries. Beyond specific issues, tensions and anxieties are often exacerbated by the disparity of size. Relations between all countries, big and small, must be conducted within the framework of international law. And this includes the resolution of disputes. As he emphasises the benefits of an open and rules-based trading system, he warns of the biggest challenge ASEAN faces, the strategic competition between China and the US. For ASEAN, we do not expect to change the course of the strategic competition. But we must do all that we can to keep the region open and inclusive. It is not a question of choosing sides, but of retaining our ability to make choices for ourselves, to advance our collective interests, and do what is best for our peoples. Our region must remain firmly, firmly anchored on ASEAN's own interests and continue to build a regional architecture that is open, transparent, inclusive, and rules-based. This is what ASEAN centrality is about. Mr Heng adds that even as the region builds on its ties with China, ASEAN must remain open to all partners for it to thrive.